In 2013, India became the fourth spacefaring nation to launch a probe into orbit around Mars. And unlike those that came before them, they did it on their first attempt. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, has been gaining a reputation for doing tons of successful space stuff on a shoestring budget. Their Mars mission came in at just $74 million. That's less than it cost to make the film Gravity. And in February this year, they made history again by launching a record 104 satellites on a single rocket. It could just be that India has created the perfect combination of big brains with big space experience, but a mentality for doing things on the cheap. Just the sort of place you might go if you wanted to, say, land a robot on the moon for the space equivalent of small change. How confident are you that this will work? <laughs> Welcome to the Earthbound HQ of Team Indus, one of a handful of startups competing for the Google Lunar X Prize. That's $20 million for the first commercial company to land a rover on the moon. December 2017, blast off. The Team Indus spacecraft goes into two days of Earth orbit and then boom, four and a half days to the moon. 12 days spiraling down to the surface and then if it all goes well, out comes the rover, travels half a kilometre, sends back HD video and wins the prize. What could possibly go wrong? Rahul Narayan is the co-founder of Team Indus and he's been here since the very start of this project way back in 2010. And at that point, you had no idea how you were going to achieve yes, it. Yes, I googled just... and uh, figured out how Wikipedia, what did Wikipedia have to say about landing on the moon. <laughs> so you, yes. You did an internet search yes. on how to land on the moon. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, and did it have any useful information? Uh, yes, it said there have been 85 attempts and I think uh, every second attempt failed to the moon. Six years later, there are around 100 people working very hard here, and it certainly looks like they know their space stuff, Star Wars in particular. Even the toilets are appropriately labelled. And they've built themselves all the things that a serious space company should have, like a mission control room, a model lander that makes smoke, and a simulated lunar surface complete with a rover to go in it. So what do you use to simulate moon dust? You could go to an expensive lab and, and try and buy lunar simulants. We just uh, went to a stone quarry and asked them to give us the milling output. So that's what this is, this is about 150 microns. It has electrostatic properties, which we're not able to replicate. It's supposed to be very, very electrostatic. So that means it's going to stick to the rover. That is correct. That is one part of the analysis. It's going to get into all the joints. It's going to get into every perforation, the lens of the camera. It's going to get in everywhere. And just like national space agencies, testing every component and simulating every stage of the mission is a huge part of what they're doing here. We, we're making sure we do everything right. We're just not making it fancy. We're going to make it frugal, we're going to make it specific to the mission, but there's absolutely no corners that we're cutting. And to look at it from a more philosophical way, we have one shot to win this. We don't have a flight spare, so if one blows up, we can go and fly the other. We're going to get this right. Team Indus is one of five startups from around the world who've secured launch contracts for their rovers. And while they can't say for sure, they think they'll launch before any other team, and so perhaps be the first team to land and win. Well, that's except for the fact that to save costs, they've had to sell some of their spare launch weight to a competitor rover. Japan's Team Hakto will be on board too. You're both going to get to the moon at the same time. Yes. How, 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 I mean, how's that going to work? <laughs> it's whoever touches down first and, and then get, who's yeah, it, whoever's got uh, the fastest rover. Yeah, I mean, it, this is going to be crazy. In a manner of speaking, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so what do you expect to happen? So uh, it's a race. It's, it's, it's going to be a very interesting race. And once we touch down, both the rovers are deployed. Let's just see which rover makes for 500 meters first. I would so put a laser gun on yours. <laughs> I would so. <laughs> All of that assumes, of course, that the rovers make it to the moon in the first place. Space exploration is a risky business, and when it goes wrong, it tends to go really wrong. Six years, hundreds of thousands of hours of effort and millions spent, 
There's certainly a lot riding on getting things right. You mitigate the big pieces and then you start mitigating the, the smaller risks and, and then end of the day, absolutely, one small wrong piece of code that somehow made its way through could kill the entire mission.